Ayun, Yates, because yeah. yeah, we all we all know how scary and how lethal Yates can get. As difficult as that does sound on paper, to keep an eye on someone who jumps all over the map, I literally all really, over the map, right? Exactly. They really, 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 really have to, because there's no other way to play around that. Of course, we will be going in Sovereign's Rise in just a few moments. Once again, it is fearless versus hago esports e first game for this set and we are running up into the game mm -hmm. any predictions here for uh, a potential winner in this clash composition wise i'm honestly just looking at fearless not just because of the gates but because they have a baron in the melee like they have enough um so they they have someone that can at least tank the skills. They have someone that can dish out so much damage. Yeah, so and that's true. I mean, if you have someone who can do all of that and more, I mean, why not? Why not try to go for that? Mm -hmm. of course, However, I st let's not forget, um, Hego Esports has the kinetic. Exactly. So they so might they could utilize kinetic and protect um, as much as they can. But then again. We'll see. Yeah, they have the late game damage output they by do. the kinetic. No doubt about it. They will fight over the crystal trend. Goes over to Dr. Django. They will be able to maybe dish out more than they can chew. Oh man, Fearless going deep, knee deep into the enemy composition for Hago Esports. And they're doing a very good job at it. Of course, that Ye is going to be fronting it up. And on the back end, there is the Ozo. They get first blood. Uh huh. By Ni Neo Kazuma. That's right. Ozo doing good. I mean, it takes a while for Ozo to ramp up, but if you give him kills, but early once he on does game, get ramped up, it should be a fun game to watch. Yep. Yeah. So absolutely beautiful gameplay there from Fearless. So Showing I guess that. um the the composition the composition still works. It just so happens that um time frame frame wise it's kind of eh and it um. Could be difficult should the game not be that long. Exactly. But, if, but of course, if they do manage to prolong it, good news to them. It is absolutely gonna be. So again, longer games is most likely gonna benefit uh, the team that does have the Baron. Mm -hmm. But you also have to take into consideration, Kinetic is a very real threat here. Mm -hmm. well, as to sure. as to who can uh, who can dish out damage in the late part later part of the game. Yeah, if, if they have Yates, they have kinetic. So I I'm just happy and excited to see. Yeah, and I have to uh, I have to look at the late game potential here for both of these teams. Of course, Hago has a lot of pressure here in the mid lane, but we might be seeing something scuffling on the top lane as uh -huh. they are gonna find the target late game. I don't think so. Goes down to the Yates. Of course, he will have a lot of pressure. Yates getting of the, the EXP and the kills that he needs is kind of scary. Look at that on point hook. Yep. You see that? Pull ins just feels natural. Mm -hmm. No problem whatsoever. No problem. Reza is going to take a while before he can be relevant in the fights. Yeah. So that's something true. that they have to think about when they try to go for a match later. His team may have to like hold on to a handful of team fights before he can actually join them. Correct. It's a, it's a challenge, but hopefully, hopefully they can pull it off. That's something that we'll have to look forward to mm -hmm. again. Fearless here doing phenomenally in the early game. This is exactly what you want to ha want to see if you run a team composition that has a Baron and the Malin. Don't forget, the Malin is actually still vi right there, just eking out some farm advantages. Something that you have to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to completely not ignore it. Yeah, that's true. And here again in the bot lane, just they're actually just both chilling and farming, making sure the minions and the. Uh, are, I mean, the minions aren't going any near, anywhere near the turrets, so... Yep, again, Samuel is gonna be in the mid lane. Okay. Also, trying to control as much as they can, but... You know, Malin versus Samuel, who do you actually pick for that fight? Malin. <laughs> the one with the front line. If both of them have front lines, mm. still go for the Malin. Yeah. Because I think uh, Samuel does have a lot of threats on, her, on his own. That's mm -hmm. the reason why he was actually very, very meta. A few patches ago, not as much this this time around though. 
As Malin does seem to be uh, having a better time here, Al although the front line, the Arden is uh, absorbing a majority yep. of the damage. I think they are gonna find some targets here on the side. Uh, one of the important things I think would be how Neo Kazuma will be able to respond in time should any one of them get ganked, like in the mid yeah. or the bot lane, top yeah, lane even. Look at that. I mean, top lane is gonna be a small scuffle there, but mid lane. Looks like Riza gonna be joining the fight. They, will they try to go for it? Apparently so. Dives in onto the Arden as well as the melee gets pulled back by the Finn. Forces to go underground to try to avoid any further damage. And so far, again, they did manage to evade it. So strong props pressure to them. Yeah, that's right. Strong pressure here for a Hago Esports. Mm -hmm. And they do force out a lot of pressure and a lot of attention, by the way, from Fearless. That's true. And here we go. We have Neo Kazuma. Um, he probably is going to get a steal on the Crystal Trent, and he did manage to do so. However, he does get stuck in the middle. Ja Jagonya gets stunned and is slowly getting away. Ooh, oh, man. That's, that's the typical skirmish, I guess, Ouch. but they decided to disengage. That is a very painful Baron Ultimate. Barely makes it out. Of course, we're still going hard onto it. Yarden, back in no man's land, still gets taken down. Ozo, gonna have to make a run for the hills if he wants to keep his life. So far, Hago, they're fighting back. I actually like how Hago is really um, careful about this. They were able to take down one and, and they decided to not chase the other one because it could be overextending or things could turn out bad. Of course, another kill going over to the Malian. Reza is gonna be sent over to the fountain. So far, bottom lane, Catherine has been quite silent. I think the Fearless does not want the silence. We are going to put up a lot of pressure. Yep. And you hear, here now, we can see that Neo Kazuma decides to join the bot lane to help farm. Um, will Killer Sadis have a hard time or will he be able to sustain it? That is the question here. A lot of pressure coming over to the bot lane of Hago. Someone's trying to make an answer, but I don't think... But they probably saw him and yeah, decided they to They did see in. him, but they do catch him out. Ozo with the jump tricks and they get a kill. Finn does not do anything to try to help him out. That was a really nice kill, but I really think Bo just so happens that he was a split second late. Yeah, so way too it, late. It was kind of punishing. Exactly. Positional is positional accuracy is key. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're fighting against someone like an Ozo. Yep. And if you're using a fin. Yes. You gotta position yourself properly if you want to be effective. Of course Ghostwing gotta be captured here by Fearless. And now they are targeting Killer Saint. He's probably not that won't be able to get away. Now he is roughly five he has roughly five percent left on his health and oh, he's there. gonna go down. Procs out the passive, but of course we'll take someone down with him. Great job there. Still fighting though. On the top, Reza forces out the ultimate. He's taken very, very low. Of course, Fret's still pretty much on the board here for Fearless. Yates is going on the offensive. Of course, you're Yates. You're, you're like kind of expected to be offen offensive, but at least be offensive in a smart way, right? Exactly. Yates and the Malin is something I would love to see in this game. So I'm really glad they're together right now. Like. They're, they're just um, gonna, they're probably gonna smash turrets and just take out as much enemies as they can. Yeah, perfect couple there. Couple for, couple for destruction. We'll steal the gold oak and they are gonna be facing off against the Finn. But looks like Kinetic gonna try to join the fight just when he was trying to get the healing trend. Dr. Django still threatening pretty much overall everywhere else. Yeah, I, I think Yates' mere presence is scary to the enemy side, so they try to be as cautious as they can. Of course, mid lane is going to be 3v4. It's going to be in favor of Hago if they don't do something about it. Ozo jumps in, tries to go for the Samuel, but he will be just barely staying in big time. Hago still in the man advantage. Jumps in by the Yates, and it's suddenly a different story. 4v2, and everyone's quite low. Triple kill here, unbeatable! And that Baron is just so fed right now. You were waiting for Baron to do something, and now there, right there, you see uh, he was, uh, Baron was able to respond. And I have got to give it to Fearless there, though. Um, their response time was on point. Yep. I honestly thought they were in a tight spot right there, but 
They managed to turn things around. Yeah, basically that was all due to Dr. Django, most of it. Yes. Barely making it out just when uh, they were fighting 2v3. Mm -hmm. It suddenly turned into 4v3. Two members of Fearless backing up quite well. Yep. Again, props to these guys for making it work so uh, so efficiently for them, the ganks. And speaking of being efficient, they are also time efficient because right after that class, they were able to take down a turret at the top lane. Again, that's very useful. If you're considering that, here comes the gauntlet though. Did you see that damage? That was basically 100 to 10%. And j because of that, another kill goes over the Fearless, no problem whatsoever. 11 to 3 on scoreboard, 10 minutes into the game. I really think that Hago should try to like, um, pick, pick, off, pick out, pick off uh, members from Fearless. Because we could see that if there's two or three of them and they try to gank the other leads or other places, they're bound to it just because of the burst potential they have and their them and their skills just being on point. Absolutely. Of course, Fearless, they realize that they have the advantage. You can see that on the board right there. 10,000 yeah. at 10 and uh, almost 11 minutes. That's impressive right now, though. They're going for a fight. Hook in. On to Gareza. Doesn't even make the ultimate out. They're fighting up under tower. But they don't care. They're just taking the hit. Samuel on the back end. Not doing anything, even the Kinetic barely has any items to make a mark. And they're, they're just trying to slowly push them away, but they have so much damage. They can push through this and they could at least get one more kill, should they be able to chase one of them. Horse Tower will suffer because of this. Turret will be destroyed. More gold over to Fearless, and again, it pushes Hago Esports back into their base. It's safe to say that the mid lane belongs to Fearless right Absolutely now. Absolutely <laughs> correcto mundo. Fearless doing a splendid job in keeping the pressure up and making sure that they get uh, Dereza down to a state where he's barely making any plays. He's barely functional yes. at this point because of how many times he dies in the engages. That's true. Um, yeah, um, he, they, he might want to like not keep on farming but try to be, be in the map as much as he can because if he keeps on dying or gets um or he won't be able to perform well he will probably get shut down and he won't be able to be of use at all to his team not not to this the player anything it's just that if you're reza even though it's hard you're you have huge roles when it comes to team fights exactly and speaking of team fights though they, it looks like they are going to be going around the black claw they try to get it. I think it was secured. So far on the back end, though, they're going for a fight there. And, of course, they're going to be suffering a lot. That Black Claw not even going to make a sliver of a difference. The heroes are doing all the kills right now. Samuel caught in a very bad spot. And that will be another kill over the Fearless. And I don't think that's the last of it. Another one. And another one goes down. They're just tanking the towers nonstop. Reza going to be the last target. He's forced to teleport out, but the rest of Fearless is here to stay. Black Claw knocking on the front. Will this be game? Where is the response here? Kinetic on the back end gets hooked in by Dr. Django. Suffering a lot of tower hits, but looks like they're still hard on it. Going hard indeed, we could see that he was here at the front line. Do Dr. Django being kind Black Claw still alive, still getting that armory. Fearless still pushing, and while there's so much skirmish there, Malin right here taking down the last of the top tower. I think that should be it. Don't forget the Baron is at the back and doing so much free hitting. Of course, he's gonna get jumped on by the Catherine. Arden gonna be taken very, very low. I think he will be the next target though. But the base of everyone else in Hago Esports is in shambles. Malin on the back end. He should make him pick offs left and right. He disables the Kinetic. He makes the dive for it. Kinetic tries to make it out alive. But I think he barely will. Just Ooh. enough damage. Superhero <laughs> landing there for Dr. Django. Just in time. Black Claw still wailing on the Crystal. And I think that will be it. That's going to leave the Crystal in a very low state there. Look at that. Just amazing work there. Or fearless. Yep, Hagu Esports though, still trying to protect their crystal as much as they can. And they did, but it's roughly like what? 1-3% of its life left? 
Man, that is something you don't want to see every day. Again, this is basically Fearless making the game run so high on tempo. Yes, We didn't true. even notice that. They were actually so far ahead right now. They're actually 12k ahead in 14 minutes mm -hmm. in, the, in that last fight. It actually did matter. All that gold enabled them yes. to tank those turret hits and make the kills that they needed to secure that crystal attack. One more clash. One more clash. Um, either Fearless will be able to take down the crystal or Hago Esports will be able to make a huge push. Absolutely. I completely agree. Gauntlet does go down up in the front. That Arden not going to be catching anyone on the back end though. Ozo able to eliminate and disintegrate with the help of the Baron. Where is the damage going to come from? Kinetic is on the back end getting wailed on as well. It is such a close fight here, but I think Fearless is just going to tear this base apart. No yes, problem whatsoever. Neo Kazuma here targeting the crystal and everyone else is 